My name is Steve Swanson again in Austin, Texas. And uh, after uh, listening to everybody speak, uh, I know why I'm here. I know one thing for, for a fact, that this nation will not survive without moms and dads on the ground taking care of their kids. It just will not. And, uh, I learned about looking and seeing, the name of a book, or Can I See, or something. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's actually become the, the focus of what I want to share today, about how important it is to see what's real. And you guys are all modeling that. Your, your, test, your testimonies are, are exactly that. Uh, the, the desire takeaway for me was, is for legislators and their staff to, before they write a bill, any new bill, they actually see what is real. As opposed to what you will experience up here over and over again a lot of talk and it's influenced by people who aren't here. It's influenced by people who have resources. The simple question, do I need this bill? Does another bill already exist to serve the same purpose? And if it does exist, are those policies and statutes being implemented? And heaven forbid, how much is the federal government involved in this bill? That's what I learned from you guys. That's the fundamental question. I'm going to talk a little bit about why it's important to see government, which you guys have already been looking and seeing, but it may not be obvious to a lot of people. Other than student needs. I ran into this language in the Texas Education Code. Uh, my story is built around being a designer and builder of buildings. And a lot of those were schools and churches, as well as high-rise residences and office buildings. And about 20, 20 years ago, the federal government, Corps of Engineers in Washington, D.C., said, well, we've got to stop suing each other. It doesn't make sense. Two billion dollars worth of claims. What are we going to do? They said, well, hung out with the National AGC and said, we've got to start building trust, learning to communicate better. And uh, I experienced that, and I learned how to do that. And I watched that happen, and the first time it happened in a school, a major addition to a high school. At the end, the Texas Education Agency, facility, head of facilities, who I used to have built buildings with before, so he was an architect, I was the builder. And uh, he said, we want to hear about that, so we had about 200 people in, in the cafeteria of a high school listening to iron workers and electricians and engineers and architects and school administrators and project managers stand up one after one another and talk about how much they love going to work every day. Well, I was in my industry. And at the end of that event, there was a super, the superintendent standing right next to me and was talking to the retired superintendent and said the following. Not, did not only it, it was this process, have a positive impact on them, the workers and the staff, it had a positive impact on students, teachers, and parents. My jaw, jaw dropped. Much like when I've had my red pill. It, it was one of those yes. And I had no clue. The superintendent up here saw somehow, some way, that the behavior of adults building a building changed lives. And so then I realized that's planted one of my seed, seeds for hope, is that we can. And you can find it in a couple other places, one of which it happens to be the Texas Education Code. So other than, by law, it's not just about the test scores, by law. And the statutes actually refer to other appropriate measures, other things than the achievement indicators. How many people in the state of Texas know that? Not very many. Right now there's those in the room. The, decade, the, the laws we've had for decades have been about community schools, public place, leadership in action. Actually, the people working together to serve the needs of kids. We've had laws for that for decades. We 
we've had laws to serve those other than needs, and it's the students' rights. So everything you guys talk about that you see is wrong, it's your right to stand up against it and do something about it by law. The other part of the statutes point to how we use our time and our money and our resources. We wouldn't have the statewide, repetitive statewide school funding lawsuits if the Commissioner of Education, he's the prime, that, that position's the prime culprit in my mind for the last 20 years of not, not looking at the provisions. And they obviously have been sucked into the other world you guys know so well. And it's the students and taxpayers, right, that we do the best we can with the money we have and the time we have and the talent we have. Now we're going to ask ourselves, how are we doing governing education in the state of Texas? Why? When I saw these statutes six, seven years ago, I couldn't believe that it was already written to do what I was trying to help volunteering in the school I met Dr. Huff at. That's where I met him. And then I met these folks <laughs> at the accountability meeting. And so it's turned, this is the choice. For me, it's the choice. And it all rests on my mind, my heart, on the backs of the greatest generation. Not on the backs, but our backs to honor what they did on their backs. Our behavior and the way we're going through education right now is dishonoring to every life that stepped up to help provide initially and then to sustain the dream we have for this country. And we're dishonoring all those veterans and all those who have sacrificed. And if Texas made the choice, made the choice to follow its own laws, and we hear a lot about law following recently associated with other things, boy gosh we better. Well, one of these days we're going to have somebody at the top governor saying, by gosh we're going to follow the laws for governing the state of Texas. They've been around for 20 years. Not these new laws wouldn't exist if we've been following the old laws. Texas can become the most competitive state in the nation in education if it becomes a leader in governing education. I believe that, and I believe that because of what the laws say. And because of the people, the relationships I've had with people like you all. We're going to talk about what we're doing to children, and serving and saving them or harming them. What are we doing for them? You guys already talked a lot about what we're doing to them and trying to do for them that isn't right for them, so it's really do it to them. And then we're going to ask ourselves, are we following the laws to serve and save and not harm our students? This was, why are This happened because of what I learned from you guys. I started asking people about what's going on in their lives and education. It's not for STEM, it's not for engineering. That's true. It's not, it's not only not for STEM, it's also not for selective colleges. Um, and my son could do the math in his head and get the correct answer, but he couldn't prove it, so he got a zero. He couldn't write it down. He couldn't write it down, correct. I was a student in uh, Algebra 1 class, and I did uh, I had a math test where I got every single answer correct. Uh, I did the work, but it wasn't the work the way they wanted it to be done. Um, and I got 25% of the class, sorry, on the test, because uh, the answer was only worth one point, and the work was worth three points. And, you write it and I, did, I wrote some of it down, but not the way they wanted it to be done. predominantly Latino and Vietnamese immigrant school, also low income, for nine years. And those kids are the very kids that you shouldn't be testing things out on. But every year, we had something new that they were trying with the kids. And every year, they would change it. I'm a second grade teacher in a Title I school. And I believe that we are so data-driven that we're forgetting that these are children that we're teaching and not numbers. 
Hello, I'm in the technology industry, and I feel that um, today's society, especially in the school districts, they will take the technology and try to bend the lessons plan and how they teach students around the technology instead of creating the lesson plan uh, that best suits the kids and then integrate technology into it afterwards. That it appears in the educational system, they've made it where nobody can work alone by themselves. It takes a team effort. And my son, who's a manager in a big four accounting firm, has expressed that when they hire people, they just can't do anything on their own. They're used to just doing it as a team. And if they're not with the team, they can't do it. There's no results. There's no thoughts that work. And he really views that as a weakness in what's happened to the educational system. So the millennials nowadays, they just stand around a little group at work trying to figure out what it is they're supposed to do because they can't think independently. I'm a uh, trainer at a local retail store and I'm in charge of making sure everybody's uh, up to par in their training and, and customer service. And uh, it's almost impossible nowadays to get anybody uh, you know, who graduated high school in the past few years to do anything by themselves. They need collaboration for everything they do. I'm the old father of two engineers and two doctors who's been somewhat involved on the side of the educational system for decades. And I believe our current educational system has the overall effect of folding and molding our kids into mediocrity. And when I see those teachers love me like I was a young kid, we started by talking and how can we show people that our school is not bad like they're trying to make it seem. Our school was basically on the straight path after my sophomore year. Then when junior year came, uh, I started going downhill. Spoke at a couple of board meetings and it impacted a lot of people. My reason was going for going down there was to show them how much I really cared about my school and what my school had done for me as a person. And I still remember a little part of one of my speeches I gave. I'm not tired of fighting for my school, but I am tired of coming down here every week and you guys not listening to me. And I think that right there opened a lot of people's eyes, hearts, minds, and that we started focusing on getting new board members because our board members wasn't doing their job. We have new board members. And I feel like the happiest man on earth. I feel like I was finally free. So I wouldn't have had those conversations if I hadn't met you guys. I wouldn't have go, uh, I wouldn't have started the conversations. I wouldn't have even thought about the conversations. Now I have the Conversations are brought to light today about what are your kids learning about sexuality. Oh my goodness, what a bullet So, what are those other than needs? What are those other than needs? Given the right conditions, all children can learn. I read this in a book introduced to me by the local school board president and she invited me to come spend time with their school board. At school board, that book is called Improving School Board Effectiveness, a balanced governance approach. And it's endorsed by TASB, Texas Association of School Boards. Now, what I, when I started reading the book, I got most of the way through it, and there was not one part of it in that book that I could not align directly with the text education code. But once it's in code, it's responsibility. Once you're talking about it, it's not. That's the big shift I've learned. That's the hard place for governance right now today, top to bottom. Is anybody willing to be responsible? This is an example that I ran into with Representative Brawl from San Antonio. 
by happenstance, my representative said, oh, you need to, I, after showing her some results from my local school district, which is, are not good results to see, but she finally got the courage to look at them relative to governance. She, you need to go talk to Representative Bernal. I ran down and I met him, met him, met his office once was before, but I got a meeting with him because I looked up his report on what he did to convene 55 schools in his district with teachers to create a safe place for them to sit and talk about what's real and what the kids need, and he captured it and put it in a report. First time I'd ever heard of anybody doing that. That's leadership. When you go to the front line, you go, know, what's going on? How can I help? What's real? Here's some examples out of his report. And I hope for everybody listening to this, that as an individual who's read agreements and read contracts and read plans and specifications in my career in design and building things, that when those things are written, they're written for a purpose and they have some validity. So I, I'm not one, these laws that were written in 1995, we've ignored. Every one of the things that you see right now that were coming from those teachers could actually be overcome and dealt with by existing statute. A through F system harms kids. We can stop it. At the, from the local level, we could stop it if we chose to focus on serving the needs of kids. The testing system needs to change. It's hurting kids. We can stop it. Anytime you see that something hurts a kid and we accept it, we're not doing our job. And the law actually requires us to say, what are those other things we should be looking at? Fundamentally, these are all the rights of our students. The stuff I'm talking about are rights of our students. The stuff coming from Washington, D.C. has nothing to do with the rights of kids. It's all about dominance and control. I think it's working. From the teachers, homeless, special ed accountability be different. Wraparound services, kids need help. All student rights under Texas law. These are actually in the code. Suicide prevention. I'll tell the story at the end about the state of Texas. Governance based upon that one requirement in state law for the local school districts. School Health and Advisory Council. You're supposed to be creating the indicators to measure success by. It's not just, oh, by the way, no, you're, it actually says any indicator created by that, that committee is what we're going to do, not just test scores. Right now, that committee could shut the whole accountability system down in a local, in a local mm -hmm. district just by using laws like that. And it actually says, other than contributing education-related factors to low-performing schools, Dr. Huff wouldn't have been talking about the disparity in Title I versus affluent, normal, and poverty. He wouldn't talk, be talking about it because according to the law, that's in the section that has to deal with accountability, Chapter 39. If anybody took those kids seriously, they would have been asking the questions, why are these kids performing low that don't have to do with test scores? We were solving problems. Texas laws required community schools public-based action for two decades to serve these other than needs. We shouldn't even be talking about it today. And to make effective use of our money and resources. This is a picture of a manual, you hear about the Commissioner of Education going out to the school districts and forcing TEA directed governance training. Well, one of the school districts that happened that happened at, they, they, they're trying to stand up. Anyway, 
one of the school board members asked me to create a manual based upon what I knew to that had the same rubric, looked kind of like what their manual looked like, and that's what this is. So if anybody out there is interested in direction and a, a legitimate continuous improvement process, not what you hear about. Sorry, that's a good word when you use it right. Mm -hmm. It's a bad word when you don't. So, mm -hmm. but uh, we put this together. We now have it as a resource for anybody. It talks about the laws. It talks about how to go through improvement. And it focuses on the Commissioner of Education's responsibility. So this is law. You know, we haven't seen too much of that today, but <laughs> when I read this sentence, and I now I'll just go through it real quick. The board shall. Now in legal terms, there's no messing around with that word. <laughs> Seek to establish working relationships with other public entities. Imagine if we were really working with other people to serve the need. Imagine that. We're just sitting around talking. And use our community resources well. Focused on the needs of the students. That's the only statute I need in the Texas Education Code to be responsible at the local level to manage a local school board. And I told this to uh, the House Education Committee chair two or three sessions ago, and he said, show me that sentence. He got his book out. He highlighted and he pointed to it, and he said, nobody knows this is in here. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows anything that's in there that's good. They talk about all the stuff they think they're going to participate in, and then they eventually sub subordinate themselves to the federal government and to big money, and that's what they throw into the code without knowing what's already in the law. Create and support connections in the community. We've had this. We didn't need, I'll, sh I'll show you at the end what. This is all language about everybody hunkering down and helping these kids succeed. And the other part of this law is it says the superintendent, again, shall, on a day-to-day -day basis, ensure board policies are implemented. Uh, that's not taught in the university. That is not taught, I know for a fact, talking to deans of education college. What does that mean? That means responsibility. We've had the responsibility for planning effectively for 20 years. For the kids' sake, so they improve. And the people involved in that planning are parents and me, and the professional staff. What do we do? We talk about education plans. When, when, you, when you, oops. We talk about planning. We talk about budgeting. We talk about curriculum. You know who's responsible for the curriculum in your district, no matter what other, every, any other chapter of the law says? That district level planning decision making committee is the one that's led. Letting it in. Staff development. The way teachers teach, who's responsible for that? That committee. As long as they're not delphi <laughs> That's a new word I learned for those. That, uh, I'm used to community engagement where people actually feel like they're participating in something and walk away with people excited about doing something, getting something done. And then uh, my experience at the local school district, I eventually was bewildered by the gathering a bunch of people and all they were doing was listening to somebody tell them what was going to happen. Well, then these folks, these parents educated me and told, told me that's being delphi And then I looked it up and there it was, delphi <laughs> So your commissioner of education, he's had these responsibilities to oversee, shall oversee. That doesn't mean go, what? That means look to provide training and technical support in planning to the board, to the superintendents, to the principals, to the teachers, to the parents, and to me. I've never seen it, and they have never done it. Even though 
since 1995, it's been The agency is supposed to shall conduct a survey on an annual basis. Talk to anybody. What is that? What are your planning structures? What's going on? Tell us. Who's involved? You know, to, just talk to them. What are their perceptions? What do they think about it? What's the quality of it? What's the impact on student performance? Well, I know for a fact that when I offered an opportunity for the TEA to tell me about this, I got a response back that said the staff doesn't know what you're talking about. And I sent them 11.254 and I said, well, it's in the law. And they went, oh, we haven't done it. Over and over and over again. TEA is the most honest about telling me they haven't been doing what they're supposed to be doing. The other districts, the districts kind of play around with it a little bit. Again, 1995, 20 years ago. The other than needs in the plan, needs assessment, there's the word other appropriate measures. I've asked for the other appropriate measures. They go, what are you talking about? What does that mean? And I say, whatever you've chosen to mean, it's actually in their policy. It reads that way too. Population served by special programs we're supposed to be focused on. And special program, that's all kinds of students, not just the special ed students. The special ed folks, if you're there listening to this, please know you're also, your rights are also embedded in the chapter 11 of the Texas Education Code not just Chapter 29 or just the federal government. So this is actually in the law. Suicide prevention is something the district, local district is responsible for and the Commissioner of Education is responsible to help them provide training so they can solve these problems as opposed to avoid them and dictate to them. We need to stop wasting money. That's pretty clear. But right now with the turmoil in our finance system, if we were following the law as it's written for the last 20 years, looking at our money to see if it's being used effectively, we would have been solving the funding problem. We wouldn't have been playing politics at the upper level on who's going to get what, who gets this formula, who gets that cost and disease. We wouldn't be playing the formula game, the cost in index game. We would actually be knowing what it takes to serve kids. But we don't see, because districts are not used to showing them what it is they're actually doing with the money, and they're not set up to know if it's being used well. Hence, we have program one, program two, program three, over and over and over. Mm -hmm. My favorite sentence, again, in the law, but in the, they're supposed to uh, identify the resources needed to fulfill a strategy that they create. They don't do that. They don't think about what's it going to take. They just buy it and they throw money at it. They have to have a timeline that they're going to monitor whether it's working or not, being well spent. And then there's going to be criteria that we're going to base the evaluation on. None of this goes on that i found. And if it is found, it's found by somebody who's courageous and doing it on their own out of common sense. All, again, for the improvement of students. Again, the state is responsible to help people learn how to do that. This, uh, I came up with, I've used it in a couple of my testimonies up here. When I started seeing um, what was going on, the down arrow on the left is the school funding system. And the black means that we're following the law. The red means it's not a good law. <laughs> around it, the red around it. On the right hand system side is the accountability system. Again, black, because
because we're following the law or trying, you know, playing at it, but red because it's not a good law. The rules in the mill are good laws. One for serving and saving children, and the other one is to uh, make effective use of our community resources. Neither of those are being followed. We follow the laws that deal with dysfunctional funding mechanisms that really at the end of the day hurt both the student and the taxpayer. And we follow the law that I'm convinced has actually taken the lives of kids. And excuse me if people don't agree with that, but I've seen enough pain, I've heard enough witnesses. I just believe that this high stakes retributive based blame and punish and fire and fail attitude is hurt lives. So one way to know how we're doing governing is to actually look at the bills that were written last session. Last session, these bills were introduced. Neither of which would have been needed had we been following the law. The DOI bill, the ESA, the anything to do with parent choice bill, none of that would have been needed if we'd been following the existing law. And these are reports I've done <laughs> to, uh, I've handed them out, the legislators got them, but they don't want to see their responsibilities or those on the top. But both of these, uh, one on the left is one that was given relative to the Commissioner of Education's responsibilities, current and the past 20 years. And the other one is a summary of a statewide research on all well, public school, uh, public schools based upon laws and policies. And uh, considering we have A to F, I've now labeled the rating of the Commissioner of Education performance is F minus. And the minus is because you have to show up to get a grade. They're not even showing up. They're doing all the stuff you guys are talking about. They're avoiding being responsible to serve people on the bottom of the system and running around and doing what they're doing on the top of the system. Same thing is true in the statewide uh, governance. It's F minus. Very rarely did anybody show that they followed any provision of the Texas statutes. So the takeaway <laughs> was for the legislators were before you're writing bills, see if there's anything already going on that's supposed to be doing that, and then ask if it's being done, because we wouldn't be standing here today if they'd been doing that for the last 20 years. And then, heaven forbid, know whether the federal government's involved. Thank you.